welcome to Take Care of Your Kitty. I'm Dr. Letitia, your pelvic floor bestie, here to keep it real about women's health, fitness, and wellness, especially for us 40 and up. We talk about everything from pelvic health, menopause, and mental wellness to fitness tips that actually work for your changing body. And yeah, we keep it cheeky and fun, just like the 90s jams I grew up on. So whether you're trying to get fit, stay healthy, or take better care of yourself, I'm here for it. Subscribe, and let's take care of our kitty together. Hit that bell for new episodes every week. See you soon. Hey, hey, we're going to be talking about my neck, my back, my, mm, not quite the whole song, but my neck and my back, what perimenopause does to your joints and what you can do about it. Stay tuned for more as we dive in to today's episode. My neck, my back, and mm, 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 yeah, mm hmm, mm hmm. But yes, if you are here to learn more about how your body works and by your changes as we get older, you're at the right place. My neck, my back, what perimenopause does to your joints and how to fight back. Hey girl, welcome to Take Care of Your Kitty. This podcast is where we talk about women's health, fitness, and well-being with no filter, just realness. So today we're going to dive into the world of perimenopause and looking at some of the musculoskeletal changes that occur during this phase. And that can be where we see an increase of joint aches and pains. So that's why we're using a little bit of help from Kia song, My Neck, My Back, even though we know she wasn't exactly talking about that. Let's talk about why you might be feeling all those aches and pains and stiffness in your neck, back, and yes, even changes down there in our pelvic floor during menopause. This area, oh, well, before I get started, I have to shout out Lot Girls Rock for my t-shirt on today. Love supporting um, small business, women-owned, black-owned business. I'll be able to throw a link to their stuff in the comments as well. All right. I've got some, don't don't worry. It all is not lost when it comes to joint muscle pains. I got some tips to kind of help those joints, muscles, still moving, strong, pain-free, so you can still be active and feel good. I'm a licensed physical therapist, and this is like one of my favorite areas to adjust, is looking at the right type of movements that's a help to help support healthy joints and function. Many of us get caught up in kind of one form of exercise or one way of doing things or totally avoiding things because they told one been told one thing in their life, you got bad knees. And then you never do anything else associated with bad knees. I hate that for you, but we're going to change that today. So during perimenopause, that's the years leading up to menopause. That's when we start seeing some of the, the changes in feeling certain things. We have fluctuating hormone levels, particularly estrogen. That can have a big impact on muscles, joints, and connective tissues. Estrogen is like playing that strong role. And then once it starts getting haywire and declining we start noticing maybe some of those aches and pains in places you never did before. Think about your neck, back, knees, hips. I've actually had um, four knee surgeries on the same knee. So I've had arthritis in my right knee for years, over a decade. It's very important what's helping me, what's helped me is adding strength, balance, plyometric tasks, having a structured plan and not just saying, oh, I'm just going to avoid those things for the rest of my life. If I would have stopped then, then I would be on the struggle bus. I would not be able to have um, the quality of movement that I have now. Are things perfect? No. But if I stop them from surgery one, two, three, four, then I really be taking out a high quality of life that, that, of things that I would really like to do because I got my mind, oh, I have arthritis. So thinking about what does it, when I see like different commentary and it really drives me crazy, when you are seeing, start seeing these recommendations for just do gentle exercises, just yoga and stretch and light weights. 
I call BS on that. But I digress more, <laughs> more about that in a few about movements. But getting, having people think there's only one way of doing things really can kind of have an effect on what their quality of life is and gives them fearful to try new movements. So let's talk a little bit about that good old estrogen. Estrogen does affect collagen production, which leads to decreased flexibility, joint stiffness, and some increased susceptibility to injury. So you're not just crazy when you start noticing um, some aches and pains and things start to pop up or those nighttime injuries like, I just woke up and I was jacked up. (laughs) Um, Estrogen and collagen, well, let's talk about estrogen and the deficiency unfortunately accelerates also things with our skin and aging. So our skin actually becomes thinner with less collagen. There's decreased elasticity and then we start seeing wrinkling, dryness. So we have an effect on our musculoskeletal system. Our skin being our largest organ is also being affected by that estrogen. Um, Also, you can mention that, you know, weight gain is common during this phase due to some, maybe some slower metabolism. And that is another contributing factor that can put strain on your joints, uh, particularly in the lower body. So we might have more individuals that are having more issues with like hip um, and knee pain. That... You know, it feels like that, man, with them 40s hit and those perimenopause symptoms, or sometimes even to our late 30s, it's like, man, all the things are happening. But there's plans. There, there's there's plan of action for us. You're not doomed. You don't have to suffer in silent. So moving on to kind of joint and pelvic pain. So the hormones, they be hormoning, basically. <laughs> uh, when it when it comes to it. The hormonal changes... Uh, and joint pain, especially in air in those areas that we kind of talked about before, um, neck. We can also see increase into that wrist and hand with carpal tunnel, um, frozen shoulder. Also become can something sometimes become common. Uh, and then we actually talked, you know, knees and hips as well. So sometimes these are these are just not random aches. This is kind of your body's way of telling you you need a little extra care. We need a little more of a targeted plan to address what's going on right now instead of not moving at all. Like I said before, that movement is medicine. Pelvic pain. So we're talking down, well, now we start moving down to our pelvic area, pelvic pain. Um, some women have symptoms in their pelvic area during this time, weakening the pelvic floor muscles and the change in, in the connective tissue. This also occurs as those hormones are shifting and doing their thing. Your pelvic floor muscles can weaken. This can lead to discomfort, lower back, hip pain, even issues with urinary leakage, which many women don't talk about. Um, they definitely need to be aware of. Nobody wants to just be running around in the commercials. Oh, the pins, I can go anywhere I want. Just active and happy and free. Hey, nobody got time for that. I was actually at lunch the other day um, in I brought up, I try to, anytime I can, I try to bring up about education and pelvic floor. And both ladies described pelvic floor dysfunction and didn't even realize that there were solutions. Um, and they're not the only ones. When we started talking, they were like, oh, wow, I've experienced dot, dot, dot for this amount of time. Or I've actually been in vo- avoiding intimacy because of pain. Or I've had this type of issue and didn't know any a pelvic floor physical therapist was there. I just thought I just had to live with it. You know, I had multiple children. They said, hey, my mom said that. My grandma said that. They're an issue. And then I told them, like, guess what? You don't have to have children to have pelvic floor dysfunction. Some of these changes you can see as we're going into perimenopause, menopause, and beyond. So what can we do to help improve joint mobility, stability, and strength? So exercise for joint health. Yes, yes. As a physical therapist, I could go on on, on and on about this. But movement is medicine. Strength training is the co-pilot. So think about plans that, that make up strength, stability, and plyometric training when you're able. Plyometric training is just going to specify training that helps um, increase the load in your joints. That helps a more stronger bone stability. Um, helps decrease that fracture risk. But that's something that you just don't need to jump in too fast with those type of things until you build up a base and have a more targeted plan. 
You can also check out um, in the show notes there um, our 14 day mental power exercise program that is free. Go ahead and sign up that so you can get a lot of these components of what a forty a plan for over 40 fitness looks like. At least get you a starting point for what that looks like. So make sure you check that out in the show notes as well. Limited spots for that 14 day. It's all online. Strength training. Yay. That's that component. Keep on talking. Muscle increase muscle mass. It's going to help with weight. That weight management. It's not just go to the gym and cardio yourself to death. And what I mean by that is you go to the gym, you go on the treadmill, then you go on the bike and you go do abs and you leave. And it's rinse and repeat. Or you go to every single hit cardio program you can. And we don't have that strength-based program in there. So even things when we talk about, you know, squats, lunges. But guess what? There's other activities outside of those that can be in a more comprehensive plan to start where you are. So I know many ladies that are exercising, we may be missing that component. But we also are also missing kind of that core and pelvic health connection. So when we look at pelvic floor training, we can incorporate that into our movements, but it also has to be an added component to be added in there. And to think about how everything is working from head to toe. We know stretching and mobility or regular stretching helps improve flexibility and reduce stiffness in your joints. So if you're able to do yoga, your simple daily stretches that are going to target kind of those key areas. And if you're a desk jockey, meaning you got a desk job, we're always going to have that forward head and shoulders. And we're going to have some areas that need um, a little extra TLC to kind of keep us moving. So think about, boom, right? If you were like, hey, I don't know how to put all this stuff together. That free, our free 14 day mental power program is going to include all these components from stretching, mobility, um, pelvic floor strengthening, and actionable chunks that you can really make a big impact on you. Even any things from low back and hip stretch stretches that can actually help alleviate um, problems and things that you may have in the pelvic floor. So, mobility, our pelvic floor strengthening, not just. I got to do the core. I want to do all these crunches and abs of steel. Well, if you want your abs to come through that, that other exercise called a push back, push back on that plate is one thing that's going to be so you can see those abs. But the core is the foundation that keeps everything together. It's more than just crunches, more than just that flat stomach. It also is going to incorporate what's going on in our pelvic floor. And Kegels aren't just for just postpartum women. And they're not just for ladies in their 40s as well. Being able to establish and actually do the proper contraction and beginning with your breathing is like the first step when it comes to incorporating core and pelvic floor exercise into what your daily routine looks like. It doesn't take a lot of time to do that. Definitely manageable. One thing that's obvious but not obvious is posture. Maintaining good posture, most of us are sitting all day, you know that that desk neck is real. So when you think about posture and we're putting strain on those um, tendons and muscles being in prolonged positions for a while, you can exercise five, seven hours a week. You sit for 40 plus hours, it's not going to match up. So many movement breaks and stretching throughout your day is really going to help with decreasing that strain on your joints. Um, so think of even, you know, even when you're scrolling on that good phone, same thing, forward head, shoulders, some things are, are going to be tight. Some things are, um, that are going to get weak when you talk about being in prolonged positions for time. So we know good old nutrition and it might seem like it's a broken, uh, <laughs> broken, uh, record here when it comes to nutrition. Incorporating um, a diet or foods rich in anti-inflammatory foods like leafy greens, berries, fatty fish, nuts, and seeds to help reduce uh, and support reducing joint pain and stiffness. So you can't go wrong adding more fruits and vegetables. Not restrict super restrictive diets, the basics on this. Your neck, your back, your joints, 
they will thank you for swapping out some of that processed food, some of the processed foods for something fresh. Some of the, the fried and the processed oil that's actually contributing to pain and some inflammation there, as well as being dehydrated. <laughs> so that hydration, hydration is essential for joint lubrication. So water is like oil for the body. It helps keep, you know, the joints moving smoothly, just like for that kitty. If you don't want the kitty to be dry, you got to incorporate that water. I'm going to take a sip on that one. Y'all looking on, on YouTube. Had to pause. If you don't want the kid to be dry, you better start drinking that water. So another thing that people ask about sometimes are going to be like supplements. So generally, omega-3 fatty acids, collagen and glucosamine, those things can help support joint health. If you're taking medications and things like that, please check before your doc with your doctor before adding in the supplements. And these are not just snap your fingers and they start working. They can help support for aching joints and maybe be able to um, replace some of some deficiencies you may have. But we're going to have some other episodes that talk a little bit more about supplementation and vitamins and minerals too. Last but not least is that good old sleep. I won't even say last but not least. Good old sleep. Sleep and stress. So stress can uh, amplify your pain and then cause muscles to tense up, leading to more aches. A lot of ladies, we carry all that, mm, that tension right in their shoulders. Ooh, I'm tight right now. So thinking about what can I do to help with more relaxation, meditation, prayer, yoga, and stretch um, to be able to add those in there for stress reduction to help with pain control, acupuncture. I just started adding that into my routine. Ooh. It's been a game changer. So when having that chronic knee pain for years and years and also suffering from depression and anxiety, along with my mental health counselor, that is what's working for me right now. Taking care of my mental health, going to acupuncture, getting it in my exercise and movement, and being able to take that time for the pause. Instead of go, 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 taking that time for the pause and figuring out what pieces have I been missing that um, have not been supporting my health, overall health and wellness. So being able to put those pieces together have really been a game changer for me. And also it's no to know, it's just like when your mind is at ease, then you know those stress levels will also decrease as well. So we're talking about sleep, stress, mental health, it's all up together. I want you to go ahead and rate your sleep. Put that down in the comments. If you're listening to this on podcast, you can't put it in the comments, but send me a message. Rate your sleep on a zero to 10 scale for real. I want to see that. Tag me on social media at Renew Her Physio. What is your sleep score on zero to 10? Quality sleep, muscle recovery, pain relief, a sleep routine during perimenopause, can be a challenge, especially if you're having night sweats, insomnia uh, issues, but developing what that sleep routine looks like for you, that's going to be your recovery. That's your recovery time. So don't skip out on, on that sleep. Find out what a nighttime routine works for you. I've been doing that as well. Cause normally I was just like, go, go, go until I pass out computer halfway up. My phone's open at the same time, trying to do all the things. But actually establishing what your nighttime routine looks like has made a big impact for me. I hope that, you know, you really got some nuggets on this exercise, on, on this episode. So Kia may have been talking about something else in my neck, my back, my, but we're reclaiming it to talk about how to manage the aches and pains of perimenopause. Yes, we are reclaiming it for us. Uh, even if you haven't heard that song, listen to it. It's pretty, pretty clear on what they're talking about. So <laughs> you've got the power to fight against these changes by moving, stretching, strengthening your body, finding what that mental health breaks look like for you. And of course, taking care of your kitty. So we'll see y'all in the next episode. Make sure that you subscribe, share with a friend or two, and don't remit, don't forget that our resource for our joint health and pain, as well as our 14 day um, free menopause exercise, online exercise program. You can find all those good actionable tips 
for today's episode and checking out them down in the description or in the show notes. So until next time, take care of your kitty. Don't forget to hit subscribe and ring the bell so you never miss a new episode. Stay confident, sexy, and healthy both inside and out. And of course, take care of your kitty. Until next time.